today's video, we're going to talk about how to do PPC for brick and mortar businesses. Okay. Basically, if you've got a local business where you normally need people to walk into your business to buy whatever you're selling, you want to do online advertising for your business. This right here is what For me, if I had a brick and mortar business is what I'm going to be going to for the very first thing that I do for that business. Okay. The reason for that is, is because I've done this quite a few times for other brick and mortar businesses already, i.e. run online advertising to get people foot traffic into those stores with the use of Google ads and Google display network ads, which it does quite nicely. There certainly is a cadence, uh, cadence to it that you should follow and of which I've actually heavily tested to figure out what's the most ideal situation. So I have a go to method for doing this for any other client that we have come into our PPC agency that wants to get foot traffic into their, to, into their local brick and mortar business. And with this, this is a system that can be used for basically any brick and mortar business, whether it's a, a, doctor's office, a furniture store, a medical supply store, doesn't matter. This will be able to get you traffic into your store, not just at a decent rate, but at a profitable rate because everything with online advertising still has to do with, can I get it done? Can I get a customer in the door for less than what it costs me to deliver that product or service to the customer and the advertising expenses, which this method does beautifully. Okay, so with all that said, I will get into the meat of this particular strategy for you so you know how to do it, know how to do it like I do it that you generally always, always works and I can count on it basically every single time that I do this and so that you could do it for yourself. Ultimately, I'll get it, I'll have a quick uh, prelude here to go through to, to go over the highlights here of what and why I do the strategy like I do it here. And then I'll get into the actual strategy and then what kind of results you're going to expect from that as well. So with that all said, doing PPC or online advertising, whatever you want to say, for a local brick and mortar store or business definitely has its own unique techniques to it to get it to be successful. It's not like doing online marketing. There's certain things. My point is there's certain things that the online stuff, online only businesses are going to do that are totally different than the brick and mortar. And if you try to do as a brick and mortar, what the online only are doing, you're not going to make it work. And IE mainly that is trying to get people, your advantage is the fact that you can get a product to somebody before they can get it online. And there's some people that want to touch and feel the product before they buy. There's some people that want to talk to a product expert or a service expert in face to face before they buy and sometimes after they buy. These are your main advantages. So you need to use those advantages to your advantage in order to get the whole thing to work or should anyway. If you, and since it works so much better to focus on what you can do better and why you're doing it better than to just try to be like an online business, um, you know, respectively, you go to that stuff first. So, and what I mean by that more specifically is online, you know, like let's say just if you're selling products like an e commerce store, they'll try to obviously, uh, they need to have to sell the product online only. There's no way to come in and look at it first. Um, so what I've seen is some local businesses will try to do just their online sales. They have a website. Why don't we just try to compete online? Generally, in most markets, it's like a hundred times harder to get that to be profitable than it is trying to sell to somebody with your ads to get them to come into your store locally. So the first thing right off the bat, I would just say is don't worry about getting an online customer only. At, at, nail down getting the customers locally that, through the ads that you can run, get them to come in more than they are to your actual store. You could make, in most local businesses, one, two, three million dollars, four, five million dollars a year sometimes in just revenue just doing that. And the way that I'm going to show, you, show it to you here, if you eventually get that going, then you can start dipping your toes into the water of online only customers, which is takes way more money to get going. You're competing with everybody now instead of the people that are just inside your local city or within your small little 
um, area of right around your you know your office your business whatever so and with that said since we're going to be catering to the people that already just naturally want to cut with or, or, or have the propensity to want to deal with somebody in person once we know that we're going to go that route there's a certain way that we need to as i described before as a cadence that we have to set our stuff up like so that we can do that well and that's totally different than what the online guy or gal would do to cater to if you cater to, to with that and the local people that you want to market to to get that low hanging fruit in your market if you cater too much to one type of user of the people that want to come in locally to you, you will scare the others away. So this is very important to know. There's three different types of people that, that want to come in locally. It's not just, I want to buy it online, I want to buy it locally. You can't think of them just as two separate distinct things. The people that want to buy locally, there's people and this is why local businesses can't get, even if you're just trying to sell the, to a local customer, you can't get by without not having a website anymore. Because you got people that don't want to come into your local store and they want to see what you have online before they come in. You're probably shaking your head yes already. Yes, Corey, yes, I understand this is true. And so, but with that said, don't get confused by that. Don't be saying, well, they're already on their website. Why don't I just sell it to them online? Again, it's like a hundred times more profit or competitive to do that because now you're competing against the big boys. A lot of times Amazon, you're just not going to make it work versus the person that already wanted to just see what you have on your website, then come in. That's easy pickings. Or at least we're going to try to do that first, take our money and then reinvest it later on, like I said. So there's a bunch of people nowadays that's like, that's exactly what they want to do. So if you don't have a website, you create one. And then with that, you use your ads to get the person who wanted to browse online the, all, the website for the local shops that are near them so they can get it right away or because they want to touch or feel the product, like I said, or they want to deal with somebody, a salesperson in person. They want to be able to return it locally. They want to be able to get it serviced locally. They want, you know, regular ongoing service from that company locally, on and on here. Those are the main ones though, why they're doing it. Uh, that way, not just going purely online. But they also have a couple other categories of people that people that are gonna specifically go online before they come in, that when you advertise online that you can go after, and you don't wanna exclude these other two as well. The other one of, uh, of which is the callers and emailers, or in other words, people that call your business before they come in to ask a question about something because like the online browsers, they wanna see that uh, you have, they have what, you know, a lot of times just check that you have something in stock or what the price is or give me some guidance before I come in to know I need to even be buying this. I say emailers, but really that's, nowadays a contact form on your website where they are going to ask a question once you satisfy their query then they'll come in because they don't want to have a wasted trip to the store your store um, anymore why why go store to store to store they could just contact you first do you have this okay what's the price okay come in they know that they can get it they don't have to go to multiple stores so that's your second major type that you if you know you want to, I should say go after you don't have to but you want to, to to make a really good profitable campaign you want this ultimately that you can't de also decipher if they're just coming in they want to browse on your website or do they want to call so that the thing is when you advertise to people locally who's interested in your distinct type of product or services you got to be able to segment out on your web page that you take them to or landing page so that the person who wants to browse gets what they want the person who wants to call gets what they want and neither are confused to how to get what they want the third type is people who want to know how close your shop or your clinic or your office is to them because they're only willing to go so far so people will search you know of course a lot of people will use like google maps if they're using google to see one one that's close but you can advertise on the search ads and some people will always still click those especially if you can write a good ad 
you'll distract them and get them to click on your ad. But when they go to your website, their initial thing was, I just want to find a dentist office that's close to me, okay? You got me to click on your ad, but if I don't get to find out how close this is to me and how to get there within like three seconds of hitting your page, I'm going to go back to what I was doing, go back to Google. I know how Google Maps works. I'm going to stick with that plan. And so there, that's another one that you have to be able to cater to. When you, so if you're going to advertise using Google search ads or Bing search ads would also be included in this, you got to be able to give all three of those diff, distinct types of users exactly what they want and they have to be able to find what they want without having to think at all, which is it's um, an art to be able to do this. Uh, respectively, I've boiled this down to an exact kind of plan that you can use where you don't have to go through all the hell that I went through figuring this all out for myself and which I'm just going to go to immediately on anybody who wants to drive more store traffic or just wants to sell more product which I'm going to use this to drive the in-store traffic like I said before competing online which is stupid to not do get people who want to be local and come in locally first but with that all said to cater to each one of these distinct audiences there's a, just a general template of a landing page I use, which yes, you need, do need to use a landing page. A lot of you guys are now on board with the idea in 2022 and beyond that yes, I have to have a website if I'm gonna do business because of these people who wanna, of these three categories of people that first search online before they come in. And if I don't have anything there, no, you know, hardly anybody's gonna come in. Nobody's gonna even know where I'm at. And the competition who has it, they're going to get all the customers. So, respectively, with that, they'll anyway they'll know that they need a website, but they won't know they need a landing page. They'll think, ha 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 ha, if they want to see a dentist, I can send them to my homepage. Good enough. They don't like it. Who cares? Everybody, when they're doing their PPC, wants to do the minimum as possible. But the people who want to click on a PPC ad want as much as possible and when you're too you're too far apart your campaign's not going to be profitable because it's get, the farther apart you are the more the cost per lead and the more cost per sale you're going to have so your goal is to make it as catered to the user as possible so that you get to where your cost per sale is below the mark in which you're break even and if you're not there then you're dead in the water as you probably already know you should first of all know what you need to be paying for a customer to be profitable after all your expenses before you even touch online advertising because that's another thing people do. They get into it. They think, gee, I'm going to get rich. Google ads are easy. And then they go ahead and start up their campaign. They get into it a month. They spend a thousand bucks. They have no clue what happened. And then they're like, my bank account didn't explode. It doesn't work. Cancel. <clears throat> And this is like 90% of people. If you go in with the idea of exactly what you need to expect, I need to get somebody to call realistically for like 30 bucks or less, or I'm going to write my revenue out for three years by month, and then I'm going to kick on $1,000 worth of advertising, and then I'm going to watch for the next six months what my revenue does in June compared to the last two Junes, in July compared to the last two Julys, and so forth. And because part of what, you know, doing PPC or online advertising or whatever for brick and mortar businesses is the fact that most of the sales are, are done um, through the store, which you can't track a lot of those unless you're going to use beacon technology, which I won't get into this video. I've got a video about beacons, which can track whether or not somebody saw your online ad and then go into your store or purchase. You, you can definitely do it with that. But um, Respectively, know what your number has to be going in so that at least when you don't, you know, what will happen is you run this campaign or campaigns, you won't get what you want, but you'll know what to eliminate times of the day, days of the week your ads are running, devices that people are on to get you to your number. And then you've got a profitable campaign that will run probably for years and churn out profit like clockwork. That's the goal of every, what you should be doing for every all you guys doing this. But anyway, if you know your numbers, this is the general landing page template and also the campaign template that I'm going to be setting up for a lo local brick and mortar business to get things to work every time. And that is, well, I'll start with the targeting of the campaign. I mean, realistically, 
the campaign targeting is going to be set up so that I'm only targeting between 3 and 30 miles from my place of business. If I have something more specialized, like I'm a fertility doctor, I'm going to go 30 miles outside of my place because the, the more specialized you are, the more people are willing to travel. If you have a dentist office, on the other hand, it's the complete opposite. If you, you will not get anybody to go more than three miles from your clinic because there's too many other competing dentists. And why the hell should I have to go, you know, 10 miles across town for my dentist appointment? I'm not going to do it, or so few people are going to do it, it's not going to be profitable. And it's not about what you want, it's about what the customer wants, and the price of the traffic is what it is. And if you start doing stupid stuff like that, you'll never make money. So, with that out of the way, you'll have to figure out what the sweet spot is with the, how far out from your office to advertise. You know, if there's less people wanting what you have, you can go wider, which makes up for the fact that, you know, less people are buying what you have in your market so that you ultimately, you'll, you guys both have the same potential at the end of the day for something that's mass market or specialized. For the landing page, so you're gonna, uh, okay, there's, Couple things here. I did this for a medical supply company recently that sells like supplies for old people, elderly people. Maybe it's more political, uh, politically correct term to, to say that. That uh, they need like wheelchairs and you know stuff to get out of their like the recliners that mechanically you know help them get out of the chair stuff like that. And um, there's two basic ways that I advertise that, which all brick and mortars are going to basically have which is going to be your general you're going to have your general searches people that are going to type in like medical supply companies medical supplies you know elderly medical supplies that kind of stuff where they're generally of the people there's a certain amount of people basically who are looking for a store in their area and you need to show up there as well okay but the second one a lot of people don't think about a lot of it's just they're lazy they don't want to think about it because they're lazy or apathetic, but people searching for the product. So in that particular case, somebody looking for a mobility scooter that they also sold in store, we want our ad to show up on Google as well, and Bing, and then we want to send them to our site from that term, and you would want to do that more because that person's closer to make a purchase than somebody looking for a medical supply store. They also know the value of the sale that can occur there, so you can go after people looking for the more expensive products that you sell or more expensive services you sell. Another one was vehicle lifts that we sold. You know, it's helped you get a wheelchair in a, in a, in a van or something like that to transform it. And uh, respectively, what you will, so you'll you'll go after specific products, people typing and looking for specific products, and people looking for stores that are in your category. But in general, and with, like with this campaign, the profitability of people looking for a product versus the store itself is three to five times more profitable than going after people just looking for a store. Because a lot of those people that go look at a store are less likely to make a purchase. This is their more tire kickers. This is the same thing in you're doing online e-commerce advertising. The more specific the search, the more likely they are to convert and lesser the cost per click, generally speaking. Um, but in this case, it's more so, they're more likely to purchase, therefore they're, uh, it's three to five times more profitable going after those product specific searches. So, and yes, that takes more time, but guess what? Whatever takes more time, your competition's not willing to do. Therefore, you're the only one scooping up these beautiful customers you could get. And so, they, nobody else was doing that in their local market they were competing with, so we cleaned up. They made a couple million dollars a year in sales just off of this campaign, mostly just going after the people that were um, specifically looking for a product. And this was in a, a, a city the size of, you know, something like, um, I don't want to say the exact city, a, a, a city of, a, you know, a million or so people, million, two million people it was doing a couple million dollars a year in sales with this model. So that gives you a general idea of how profitable this can be. And just going after and setting up ads for each product that people were searching for in your, so if they're in your, basically, in, to, to round this out, if they're in your area and they're searching for products that you sell, you have your ad show up for those people, and then you direct them to a specialized landing page to sell them. 
in your ad, you make note that you are, you're looking for, you know, a uh, vehicle lift. We sell vehicle lifts locally, Miami, assuming that that user is in Miami. So if they wanted local, wanted, or if they're entertain, they would entertain going locally. Their ad, your ad flags them down. But then to follow that up, you've got to have a specialized landing page to, to be able to capitalize on that traffic and, and to make it work and not screw up the traffic to where it isn't profitable. So going that general direction, you can divert somebody who was potentially going to buy online, but now they'll go locally because you were at the right place at the right time. You, got, you give them a landing page like this, you convert that traffic and that potential lead into a real lead and a sale at a very, very high rate, high enough to pay for all your expenses, your ad spend, and still come out on top. Respectively, this company that did a couple million dollars a year of sales, we're only spending about five grand a month in advertising. So it's an insanely profitable campaign that we did in this particular medical supply space. You know, that, that works out to like a 20 to one return um, or greater, specifically if you do the math on that. Okay, um, 20 to 40 to 40 to one return basically is what more so like 40 to one uh, specifically with that that model. Okay, or with this model I'm sharing with you here. But anyway, as far as how to line this landing page up, the, a lot of people don't realize um, why landing pages have to be expensive. Why you have to go to a specialist to do this stuff. A landing page that converts well uses white space well. It, it's laid out well. It's laid out very methodically. Certain things are in certain places for very specific reasons so that the eye flow on the page is that go, your eye glances over certain things in a certain order that needs to go through to not for the user not to get confused. And if you don't do it right, your page just won't convert high enough for it to work. A shitty landing page that you try to do for this will convert at 1%. An extremely good landing page that's done more so with this model, you'll get 15% of people to either call or come into your store, which when you're talking about very low cost per click, that's an ex you have your potential to get a you know, 20 to 40 to one return on your, on your keyword searches. Of course, you only have your local market potential, but you know, a couple million dollar a year business with the 40 to one return is for most people, they'll take that all day long. So what you do to lay this out, so all three of these people, the online browsers, the callers that want to call first, and the people who want to know how close it is, are all taken care of is with this general model here. This is the layout of the landing page I'm going to use every time here, okay? So the first thing is you always have the logo at top left. Why? Because this is the default place everybody looks for a logo. Don't screw around putting it on the right side or anything else like that. It'll hurt your conversion rates. Two. To, just to the right of the logo, put your slogan of like what you do. We Medical supply store since 1998. So they know they're at the right place. On the right hand side of the top uh, header area, put the telephone number. Why? Because this is where everybody looks for the telephone number that's looking for it. Don't screw around and put it somewhere else. I mean, you could put it more than once on the page, but make sure it's always up there. And then directly under the phone number, put your hours. Why? Because people will generally look at the top of the page there for the hours if you're in a local business uh, context. So um, you don't have to put them all, just put like seven to seven, Monday through Friday, you know, eight to five, Saturday, Sunday, so that it, it's somewhat concise underneath that number. But that's the top part. Then you get into the, the main header area. Before you scroll, you'll be able to see everything that's here up. You're going to have the headline. So if they were typing in vehicle lifts, we said vehicle lifts Denver, because and we're in Denver. I said Miami before. Vehicle lifts Miami. They click there. Our headline is going to say vehicle lifts Miami. And then there's going to be a map, that a picture of a map that shows where in Miami we're located. Directly underneath that, it's going to say browse, browse or inventory or visit. And on the map, there's going to be a, a, a red pen that specifically shows where on the, in Miami you're at. But uh, basically, they see where you're at, and then the button underneath, browse or visit, browse online or visit our store, it, it's going to have a button that says CR vehicle lift line or C, uh, vehicle lifts line. With that button, when they click on it, will take them to the part of your website where you have the vehicle lift inventory product 
product inventory of what's in stock so they can so that type of person that I listed here at number one can see what you have in stock before they come in. So they can see they see, okay, I can't they're close, I know where they're at. Okay, now I'll go look at what stock they have. Okay, now I see their prices are good, I'll come in. Underneath the button, see our, our vehicle lift line, you say you have a button, another link for driving directions, okay? Driving directions, is, you click that through Google Maps, you can have it so that right away it goes to another link that shows you know, where you're at on Google Maps and then you just type in your address and then it'll tell you the exact driving directions um, to, to your location. And of course, they can click to export that to their phone makes it you're just making it easier for the user to get to your store the easier you make it for them the more you're going to sell the higher the roi you're going to get but that that link it's just a small textual hyperlink underneath the button so people can you know get to your driving directions that that would be helped out by that so we've and then up so this whole image here to the right hand side which is blended into the left part here but like kind of here over you have your picture of your store your storefront specifically that shows yes you have a real store your store does what you're searching for like it's a medical supply store in this case is on the example that I'm, I'm going to stick with talking about here it's a medical supply store and then there's three images which I just do like a circle design showing the vehicle lifts different vehicle lifts you have. So you can see, okay, vehicle, there's a, um, there is a, um, a medical supply store and they sell vehicle lifts. Great. I know I'm going, there's a real store there. They sell the vehicle lifts because I can visually see that it's laid over top the image of the store. And then in between the images of the vehicle lifts here in this particular case, since we're talking about somebody searching for a vehicle lift on Google or on Bing, we're going to have a offer that says $25 off in May only on all vehicle lifts or on all products if, you, if you're if you too lazy to um, you know do just vehicle lifts for whatever reason you you know either would work fine as we found but you what you put around the offer is what is called a John, Johnson box so it's a dotted line around the offer because you're always usually drawn to those dotted lines and so you could see okay I know it's a medical supply store, I know they have vehicle lifts, and if I do it now, I'm gonna get this off of my sale, off my purchase, so I better not procrastinate. The less you get people to procrastinate, the more money you're gonna make again, because a lot of good intentioned people that we're gonna come in next week, now, uh, basically they'll get distracted, they'll spend the money, they'll blow the money, I should say, on something else. You know, their husband says no, Whereas you're, the husband wasn't home, so they could have just left. You know, there's all kinds of reasons why your sale falls apart when somebody procrastinates and says they're going to do it later, whether they're good and they have good intentions or not to come in, or whether they had perfectly good intentions to come in or not. So that's the general formula for the above the fold. Directly above that, before you have to scroll still on the page, you're going to have some text about your product line. Our products are good because they're made from in the USA and they're durable, whatever here. Uh, granted, there's a line here, a, a, real, a real line. This isn't just for demonstration purposes, but there's a line directly underneath here and then there's another line here. So you have like a strip and so you say why your vehicle lifts are so good. And then you have your Google reviews here and your like bird eye reviews, or this could be Google and Facebook, or it could be Google and Yelp. But you have a couple of reviews and it shows your reviews and your review score and you, in the star. So Google, how many stars you have, like 4.7 next to it to show your score. Bird eye, five stars, 5.0 score next to it. So they could see, okay, the, because the next thing they're gonna wanna know right after they know you can do it, where you're at, you're worth driving to, you have the inventory you want, is can I trust you? And you take care of that before they have to scroll. They've got everything basically at that point that you probably need for them to come in. It, and, and that's why you're gonna get a 15% conversion rate on your page to either a come in or call or fill out a form to ask a question. And um, you know, given, they want to know your products for quality. Talk about how quality your products are here. It could, you could also talk about how quality of your services are here. This works for services or uh, product businesses. 
Um, why? Because the type of people that if you're a local and you want somebody that wants to deal with you local versus online, they want to know you have a local office and it adds um, a lot of trust and um, desire to deal with you because they are more knowing about what you're like without having to, you know, a lot of sites they don't show their office. Well, how do I know you've got an office? So anyway, just, just know you can do this for product or service businesses. It works great for either. Directly after this, this is the part where you have to scroll to see the rest of the page. Um, you get down to this, this next section, you're going to have CR Vehicle Lift Line or, uh, well, pretty much just is that's CR Vehicle Lift Line or CR whatever the product is line. Um, if you're doing services, it would be um, C, you know, basically could be something about that service itself and you necessarily don't have to send them to another page but if you are having a product see our vehicle lift line and i'll have if we have 10 different vehicle lifts i'll have an example vehicle lift one two three four five the pictures of the vehicle lifts and then the name of the product underneath each one and then a button that says see more so they can see more of the inventory you have for that specific product which takes them to the page with all your inventory on it this link goes to the same page this button here did up top. So basically if they're scrolling, you just gotta think, okay, what else would they need to know if they didn't get everything they needed already at the top of the page? Um, realistically, the chances are, um, if they're scrolling, they probably need to know more about the product, right? Well, in that case, let's focus on reselling them on, just go look at our product. We have a site that has them all there. Go ahead and look at them. So that's why you would put that section there. Below that section, you have one section left. If they already, if we know that they aren't interested in looking at our product anymore, then they're probably just wondering, okay, either are you close, which sometimes they'll skip over our map. Um, you know, are you close? Where are you at? And what's your contact information so I could call you first? And so at the bottom section, I'll have a map here with a, a pin located on that map where you're at specifically so that I can see where, what part of Miami you're in again. And then I'll have something on the right hand side that says uh, uh, in bigger font, get in touch. And then I'm going to have our address, our phone number underneath it, and then our hours again underneath it. So they could see, okay, we're open. Here's our number if you want to call us. And here's the actual address, basically all the information to come in. Or if you're not going to come in, go ahead and give us a call and um, respectively the rest of the information that you would need to go ahead and finish taking action, okay? Uh, respectively, I, you will notice here, I don't have a contact form on this page. For some of you guys, I would put the contact form, particularly in services, I'll add a contact form. Um, a lot of times I'll just put that contact form here. I'll put uh, a, the form here at the bottom of the page respectively and if you're not going to take people to see the rest of your inventory this button here i'm going to say contact our firm and then have that as a light box form that pops up and then let them fill out the form there and then here on the if it's a services if it's a service you talk about the service that you're offering and then um, you can have a button again this that will pop up a form saying uh, get in touch and then so you're asking them to fill out the form several times on the page any place where you, They would go look at the inventory since that's not relevant in this case You ask them to you know contact you basically and so but that's in general what I'm going to use for a brick-and-mortar to get the point across that hey We are local. We're close. Here's where we can be trusted. Here's our reviews and Whatever you are looking for we do it. We're local. Here's where we're at. We do have an office You've got all the information you need. You're going to be, you know, if you do this basic formula for product, for service, you're going to get a 15% conversion rate on to either a call or a form fill or them coming into your, your location or office, like I said. And so with that, you can track. I always recommend, if you've seen this channel before, call tracking. Why? Because the tracking data you get from calls helps steer your ads to get more and more profitable. Google uses a machine learning algorithm to get you more and more leads at a cheaper and cheaper rate by using the conversion data you have. And through the software I recommend is CallRail for this, but 
You can track when somebody calls, you can track whether somebody fills out the form if you go that route and have a form. You can also track if somebody downloads driving directions here, going back to that, like I mentioned before, that'll be a goal or a conversion that we set up to track. And so with that little bit of call data and the driving directions data, we can use that data to, on our side, see the times of the day, days of the week, you know, what part, what zip code they're from specifically, are they male or female, are they, what age they are to modify your bidding so that you're getting more of the stuff that produces at the cost per lead you want and, and taking budget away from the part of the account that doesn't produce the cost per lead you want or cost per sale you want and then reallocating it. And then therefore your profitability of your account will keep going up and up with that data. Google will also use your data to keep getting you more and more of the right people that will drive your cost per sale down um, people that are searching for a vehicle lift, and like in the example I gave, um, they'll see when somebody you know converts into a call versus somebody or driving directions button click or versus not, they can see things like, well, that person visited at least one other website about this vehicle lift product, and so therefore, out of all the people searching for vehicle lifts in Miami, we're with. We'll have your ad show up almost 100% of the time if they've been on one of these other websites. Whereas if they haven't been on one of these other websites, we'll let somebody else's ad show. And because there's like 10 people cycling in and out of the ad spots for any one keyword, they can do that for you. So the conversion tracking is very important to get more profit out of your ads. And if you're not profitable enough and not hitting your numbers right away, you let the ads run for a while, get some conversion data built up, you will be able to hit your conversion goal, your cost per lead, cost per sale goals, and, uh, then it'll, and then it'll just keep getting more profitable from there on. That's the basic formula. Now, if you want it, that's for search campaigns, okay? I didn't talk about display advertising. Through Google Display Network, which is done still through Google, the Google Ads platform, I would recommend once you've get, gotten everything you can out of Google Search, which you can do a, you know, millions of dollars with the search ads alone, but you could take that even further and add millions more getting the display right, okay? For the display ads, what I would do is I'd come up with one product that is um, what they call a loss leader or come up with a, like an unresistible offer if you have a service where you're offering you know, introductory rates or whatever. Something that's the that other people aren't gonna offer but not so much, you're not gonna do it on everything you offer or discount everything you offer, but just one small thing to get the person in the door. Grocery stores used to do this with the circulars and the newspapers where they'd offer like a bag of sugar for like, uh, you know, less you know, at a loss. That was why they call it a loss leader to get somebody into the store and it worked very well, it worked for decades. You apply this to the display ads and you get a bag of sugar on there that's selling at a loss, you have that in your banner ad, okay? And you, when they click on the ad, they get sent to a page that has a, like what looks like a coupon in that bag of sugar, and it has a, uh, a, a discount code on it. And I would also put on there that, that uh, something that says, you could take a picture of this and show it to your cashier, and we'll give you the, the deal on this. So you don't have to have a physical coupon. Um, respectively, if it's on a desktop, they could take a picture on their phone since everybody has smartphones now, or they could just screenshot it on their phone and show it to their cashier when you check out. So now you've got a mechanism and tool to drive people into the store with a banner ad now. Okay, um, you can track the, of course, how well this is working. You can look at your, if, is your revenue going up um, from this, or you could track if somebody's, you know, how many codes were mentioned at the checkout, how many people were, uh, make a tally of how many people showed the screenshot. Generally speaking, though, the best way to track how well this is working is still to look at your revenue, do a certain budget, watch your sales go up, increase the budget, double the budget, see if your sales go up another similar proportion and keep doing that. And then if you really want to know, turn off all your ads for two weeks and see what your sales revenue does. Does it dip down? Then you'll know kind of how well this is driving the in-store traffic for your business. But um, <clears throat> respectively, 
The conversion tracking for something like the coupon is harder to do. You're not going to have conversion data to work off of like the search ads uh, necessarily. You can actually improve this by saying uh, in order to get the discount code, um, enter your email address and we will send it to your, to your email. That way when somebody enters their email, you can count that as a conversion. I don't recommend that because it adds an ad extra step that a lot of people won't want to do, but you could test it either way. As far as how to target this display ad though to work, basically what you're going to do is you're going to get set up what is called custom intent audiences. This is a display targeting audience that you're going to craft on your own to meet your individual personalized needs and not use Google's default targeting settings as the mechanism to target your banner ads here. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to type in all the product keywords. So if I run a grocery store, going back to the bag of sugar, anybody who types in any like food searches re recently, um, I'm going to have those keywords in my custom intent audience. So if they're searching online, they're probably looking online what the deals are. They're probably more receptive to my banner ad that has the loss leader on it. So I'll create an audience with just all the keywords related to pro like food products, save it. And if anybody searched for those in the recent past, your banner ad will be eligible to show up for that person now. The second audience I would target would be competitor terms. All your local grocery store, if going back to the same example, all the local grocery stores, you're going to write down all the, comp all the ways that people refer to them and put those into a custom and intent audience and save it. And now anybody who's searched for competitors in the recent past, meaning they're probably going on their website to see their specials, you can get in front of them as well. You start there because those are the far most likely ones to convert at a very high rate than somebody who doesn't really go through the circulars. It gives you insight of who's searching for your deal in the first place. And that person is as good as anybody else. As they spend just as much. Yes, they want a little bit of a discount more often, but you want that customer. The same thing can be applied to any of like the medical supplies, which I didn't do it for this particular business, but I have done this before for other products. But in the med going back to the medical supplies business, it's the same thing. We're offering lift chairs, which you normally try to do something that everybody's gonna that needs us to buy from you. The most people are buying, so it applies to the most people. Most people need a lift chair at some point, so we're offering lift chairs at 50% off this weekend. Generally, it helps to have a limited time period to do it because it builds up urgency, the, uh, gets rid of procrastination. And you heard what I said about procrastination already and um, that pops up for them and then ultimately if they search for anything to do with any of the products I sell recently now they have an excuse to come into the store now or and a lot of times they wouldn't have never came in but now they're having a special on lift chairs I'll come in because I wanted to look at this other item already and uh, of course if they've been to any of my competitor sites I definitely want to have my ad show to them as well for services this is the same thing. If they search for anything to do with, if I'm an accounting service, if they look for um, accountants in the recent past, I definitely want my ads to show up here and try to get somebody where I'm offering a, a uh, reduced price bookkeeping service, which all people that needed accounting services need the bookkeeping, uh, to, assuming we want business customers. And then that gets them in the door so we can sell them on yearly taxes and all the other stuff that we have to do. That would just be how you go about doing it. Okay? So, <clears throat> respectively, your landing page though for this, it's just simple. All it does is it gives people what the offer was on the ad. You're going to do the rest of the selling when they come into the business. You don't talk about all the, all the other stuff. They can get to your rest of your website by, click, by clicking the logo on your landing page there. But the idea is they see your offer, they think it's a good deal, they'll go to your main site, check you out a little bit more, and then they'll come in for your offer. Then you'll lose money on that offer, but you'll make it up on the long-term business you'll get out of that person. It's the same way that grocery stores have done it for years, that you'll do for your accounting service or whatever you're doing for services or whatever product you're doing. So 
As far as the targeting though, just to close this up, the, if you have a mass market product like a grocery store, uh, you may toy around with just targeting general demographics. If you've already tapped out the people that are already kind of the, looking for a deal on their groceries, because that's the type of buyer they are, you may want to go ahead and take your mechanism and see if you can get people that are a certain, you know, because what you'll be able to do is out of all the people who um, come into your store, you can profile them, um, respectively, all the people who click on your ads already. Um, you can see they're female, you know, 25 to 35, generally most of them, um, respectively, and just try to run ads at female th 25 to 35, still within your geographic radius around your store that you find that most people are willing to drive to get to a grocery store and try to go that route to expand even further. It'll, be l it'll come with a lesser ROI doing that because it'll be less targeted, but it may be good enough to still cut the cheese, if you will, and make you know, a profit, even though it's not the amazing margin you would have got, going after the people who are already looking for that exact loss leader type offer that your competitors are doing, or which in which they would just be more apt to want to see themselves because they've been looking for similar and researching similar in the past already. But uh, in general, that's, in, that, that's how to top off the search engine campaign search engine advertising campaign to get even more done for your lo local brick and mortar business. And what I would be doing for my brick and mortar business if I ran one uh, today, uh, specifically for you know regular mass uh, market services or products, okay? That all said, hope you enjoyed this video. I have a lot of other videos on this channel about other PPC money-making strategies. If you like it, you should check out other, those other videos. And you should consider subscribing. I have a couple, you know, several videos a week a lot of times on PPC strategies that make money. It's the best money-making PPC strategy video uh, channel on YouTube as far as I've seen. So you should consider watching some of my other videos. You should also consider liking this video if you would. If you like the information presented, I would appreciate it. I have a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build PPC campaigns the way that I build them for our clients here at our PPC management firm. If you'd like stuff in more of a step-by-step -step format to kind of see how we use what we use here, like I showed you here today, to guarantee our clients' results, you can find information there that's pretty good as well. Might be able to help you out as well. Uh, if you have any questions about the brick and mortar strategy I gave you here, leave me a comment down below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel as well. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in my next video or I come out with another great strategy I can make you a lot of money with PPC as well. See you there.